Welcome to Christmas at the Tabernacle 2020. We are so excited to have you here on this glorious Christmas Eve. This is the time of year where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So come and celebrate with us as we share this glorious evening together. Welcome to the Tabernacle of Prayer Christmas program. Um, I am happy that you tuned in on this beautiful day. Um, season's greetings from me and my wife and from our wonderful church. Um, we've put a virtual program together. Um, we hope you enjoy it um, due to circumstances. We have to do it this way, but uh, we just want to give you and show you some love at this time. So sit back, relax, and watch as the Tabernacle of Prayer uh, gives you some love virtually. God bless you. See you at the end of the program.
Hi family, this is Elder Paris Parker, sending you greetings and a merry, merry Christmas. So glad to be able to share with you and send some love your way, reminding you that Jesus is the reason for the season and that God gave us his perfect gift in his son, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Embrace the Christ child. Have a happy, happy Christmas. Are you enjoying Christmas at the Tabernacle of Prayer? If so, please take a moment to share this broadcast with your friends and family. Now, our talented musicians have a special presentation for you to enjoy.
Season greetings, everyone. I'm Elder Andrew Brown here from Tabernacle of Prayer. And this is a wonderful time of the year when we gather together with our loved ones or friends and whomever we're close to. Um, Christmas to me and to me and my family means so much. It's a season of giving, um, not only giving, but giving thanks for what God has done for us. Um, being from two cultures, I could see the subtle differences in how we celebrate this time of year. And for me, those memories have been great and wonderful. And it's something that I hope to share and I've been sharing with my children. Um, Christmas is a time of giving. And there was one Christmas where I had not seen my, my mother for a good like three months, four months actually. And I took a plane trip to United States of America, my first plane trip to the US of A, and it was Christmas time, December 15th. I remember me and my dad, you know, just traveling the plane, coming to this country, and it was, in the winter time, it was cold. But then we did a lot of things together. You know, we went to the Rockefeller Center, ice skating, all the candy you can think of. And it was a time of just camaraderie and giving and being thankful. So that's something we should continue to celebrate, giving of ourselves and giving to each other. So my prayer for us is just to give and know that someone will be given to you. So God bless you. Have a wonderful time. It's Christmas, all right? Wow, isn't this an exciting evening we're having together? I hope it is as special for you as it is for me. If you would like the opportunity to partner with us at the Tabernacle of Prayer Revival Center, here is some more information. Join us just as we sing, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Hey. 
great Christmas Eve. I know I am. I got my grandmother's sweet potato pie. I'm about to give me some whipped cream and some milk and go to town. So what does Christmas mean to me? Christmas is a season of remembrance, being thankful, giving, sharing. But most importantly, it's a time where we all can say that we know someone who loves us. And that someone is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So I pray that you guys have a wonderful holiday, whether it's virtual or socially distanced. And I love you guys, and I will see you on Sunday. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Oh, God bless you. I'm just playing. I hope you have enjoyed our program so far. I am sitting with our pastors, Pastor Randy Cannon and his lovely wife. I'm sitting with Pastor Jenkins and his lovely wife. And I'm sitting with my lovely wife. And um, we are just here to show some love to all you wonderful people out there. Uh, Pastor Cannon, how you doing over there, my brother? I'm doing great. Doing You're good? great. You're good? Pastor doing Jenkins good. is over here. How you doing, my brother? We straight. All right. We straight. Um, I just wanted to say that um, one, uh, we've had some wonderful moments um, um, in this church and uh, outside of this church for Christmas. Um, I remember uh, as a young man when my mother had a church in Ossining and how we would go uh, sleigh riding across the street at the college and, and um, how all the young people would come together and we would spend Christmas uh, eating, of course, praise God, eating, um, talking and having fun. And um, it kind of seemed like those times are not uh, like they used to be, but we are in new times and um, we are trying to make new memories. So um, let's start with my brother and his wife. Pastor Cannon, what, what, what does this season bring back to you? Or what are some, some moments in this season? Uh, man, I, I got a lot of moments. I'll just share two with you. Um, one time, it was going to be a very bad Christmas. In my house, my sister got excited. We'd be the only house on the block with the lights on having Christmas at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and one morning, um, I watched too, too much TV, and my room was the first room up the stairs. And I decided if you was going to rob my family, you got to get to me. So I always slept with a bat next to my bed and a sock, a sock full of the D batteries, the big ones. And one Christmas, I see these footsteps creeping to my door. I say, you robbed the wrong house, fool. <laughs> So I got the, I had the socks in this hand. I was gonna hit him with the face on the top and the bat on the knees, just in case he tried to go low. And my door started to creep open and I got in stance. And as soon as the door, I went to swing and my sister said, hold up, hold up, hold up. It's me, it's me. And boy, that was gonna be a bad Christmas, man. And that's the sad story. But the funny story is this. One Christmas, we had everybody come to the house and my friend, he, one of my cousins brought a guest. And this particular year, my mother wanted to keep the carpets clean, so she asked everybody to take their shoes off. My cousin was like, can he please keep his shoes on? You know what I'm saying? And we didn't know why. We just thought he wanted him to keep his shoes on, man. And he's pleading with my mother, and my mother's like, no, man. Like, you got to follow the rules. You got to take your shoes off, man. And when this dude took his shoes off, it smelled like chestnuts was burning on an open fire, my brother. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and then somebody came down the stairs and they was like, what's that smell? And we was trying to tell, we was trying to like give them the eye like. <laughs> and they kept on like agitating and like, Yo, somebody's feet stink, man. And he was, he was trying to like calm him down, like, yo, chill out, man, chill out. And the dude, you could see him sitting there with his head down, feeling mad, embarrassed, yo. And so we we just got some funny Christmas stories, man. Christmas just means family and laughter and memories that you'll take with you for the rest of your life. That's beautiful. Um, those out there in video land, I want to, to shake your neighbor's hand and say, chestnuts burning on an open fire. <laughs> All right, God bless. Uh, let's, let's go to, before we do our wives, let's go to uh, Pastor Jenkins. Uh, Pastor Jenkins, what's uh, some moments for you um, 
before um, God took away the belief of this day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's, I'm not ashamed. Um, you know, um, I got, I didn't, I didn't, well, I had, I had, I had a bad, a bad Christmas was, uh, Deirdre and I were married and, um, we decided as a family that we were going to celebrate Christmas on New Year, on Christmas Eve and Christmas day, we were going to just, everybody was just going to do their own thing. And that was like the worst Christmas ever. <laughs> we went to Asian temptation. It, it was just, what? it was horrible. It was, a, uh, I think Christmas was on a Sunday that year. And we did Christmas Eve at, at, at my parents' house. And then we did, um, it was just awful. <laughs> so, um, but a good, a good Christmas, I got two stories. One, um, I was, I think I was n nine. And my dad, it was the Christmas, I think, at 88. And he bought i never seen our house look like that. Like, it was crazy. And I know Christmas is not really about gifts, but as a kid, it is. Yo, man. To this day, that's probably the best Christmas ever. I had, I mean, everybody got. We all, it was just a crazy time. And um, I remember coming out of my bedroom, and there was, remember, we used to have to go to Christmas breakfast. Yes. So yeah. before we could open our presents, mm -hmm. we could see them on the tr under the yep. tree, the but we church. had to come to the church for the Christmas breakfast, yep. which was fun in and of itself. And the, th um, the church's, uh, the Bible school's Christmas festivities. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was fun too. But anyway, came out the room. Man, I had a bike. I had a fake double goose country. She, my father, <laughs> remember Bunnies? Yes. The store of Bunnies, Bunnies in yeah. White Plains? She, um, somebody bought me a, like a bubble coat, but it was leather with the fur and, um, Nintendo that year. And I thank God for my dad. Cause he said he waited in the rain. He traveled all around looking for that N Nintendo. And he said that was the last time he would ever do anything like that <laughs> again. But, um, that was a good memory. I still remember that to this day. That's, that's wonderful. Well, why don't you pass it to your wife sure. and we'll start that way. Um, okay, so, hmm. <clears throat> so as some of you know, some of you might not know, I'm American, but my entire family is Jamaican. So we would go to church on Christmas morning and have service mad early. So that kind of dampered the spirit a little because <laughs> I wanted to open up gifts. But we'd have to be there, I think it was like 6 o'clock in the morning. Wasn't it 6 o'clock? I think it was 6 o'clock in the morning. We had to be there on Christmas morning every year for a, a long time. Sunrise, sir. Sun, oh my gosh. So <clears throat> we would have to go there, and, you know, they would have traditional Jamaican breakfast, cocoa tea. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Akia sawfish. Mm. Kalaloo, banana, I mean, dumpling. I mean, the whole nine. And then they would throw in eggs sometimes. <laughs> eggs, but di dinner and eggs. I mean, this, that's what it was. So we would, have, we would have to go there, and then from there, you know, we were tired, then go home. And, you know, my parents really didn't believe that we had, like, you know, the same tree for, like, Ever, you know, the ones that you got to put the blue, the yes. one that's <laughs> yes. Yes. the yes. bottom of the tree is blue. You know, the bottom of the like <laughs> the branch is blue. OK, you put it in this hole and then white. And that, you know, that's yes. so we had that same tree for all my life. I, I guess <laughs> she never wanted mommy never wanted to get another tree. So we would they didn't really, you know, get into Christmas spirit but anyway go under the tree and I'm I'm like all right hopefully this year they won't be like they normally are and get me something nice no it was this I never forget it was like a you know like the perfume sets yeah. 
It smelled like dead flowers. So I, I took it out and I was like, oh, I was so excited. I got, <laughs> Chanel number 12. It was so bad. It smelled so bad. I was like, mommy, why? Whatever. Anyway, it was underneath the tree. Put that on. Got, I got like something like socks and slippers. And I was like, come on. It was never really like, you know, a thing where I guess... You know, we weren't really into big into gifts. So when my sister and I got older, we would go to, y'all remember the marketplace? Yes. Come on, who didn't go to the marketplace? So we would go to the marketplace and we would ask daddy and mommy for some money or whatever and go and buy gifts and be like, to me, from me. <laughs> <laughs> Or to my sister from me, or whatever the case may be, and put it underneath the tree so it looked like we had the best Christmas ever. And my parents, they didn't even, you know, I guess it wasn't like a thing. Yeah. So we had to give each other gifts for years. So that was, I mean, that was one of the, you know, the downfalls of Christmas was the getting up early. And then, but we had a lot of fun when we would get together you know, and play dominoes, and the men would be, like, in an, another room and breaking tables, and you hear them, what? Pow! And you hear them smacking the dominoes. Smack dominoes. I mean, smack, smacking dominoes on the, you know, and my mom was, she was a lot more subdued, so she was in another room playing <laughs> Scrabble. <laughs> So, you know, like it was, and then we would literally stay up all night and the kids would be in one room and we'd just talk and they'd have fun and eat. And so that was something that was a, you know, um, a really good um, memory, but, you know. That's wonderful. Memories are memories. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all out there, just, um, this is not a time to be sad. Um, I want you to, just think about, you know, things, good and bad, because um, you'll find some joy in it. You'll find some joy. Uh, Katie! Hey. Hey. <laughs> Talk to us, Katie. Okay, so my Christmases from when I was a child till now are completely different. Mm. So as you could hear, I'm Jamaican. <laughs> yes, no. I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, our Christmas experience will start um, Christmas Eve when my cousins and the kids from our community, we will go to, to the town center, right? And then we would meet up and we would hang out. That was the first time we felt like grownups because we were out after 12 at night. <laughs> we would walk, we would eat jerk chicken, we oh would my. just have fun. We would chicken. see kids from our old school or wherever they came from. It would, that was just like one of the best things we did when we were young. Then Christmas would come and my grandmother, she would put that good roast pork. Oh my gosh, come on that here. was good. Feel God now. And it wasn't even about the gifts for us because I cannot remember one Christmas present I got when I was a child. Exactly. The gifts were needs. You needed a sneakers, that was your Christmas present. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. exactly. So it was just the family coming together. Your cousins that you haven't seen since summer are back in town. Your aunts, your uncles, whomever they are. And your, your, your grandmother, your mom, whomever, they pulled out the good plates and the good stuff that you haven't used since last Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that, for me, was my experience in Jamaica. So now coming here to America, that was a culture shock. I'm like... That's kind of wasteful. Why, why do we need all this? <laughs> I mean, that's my experience, right? It's all right. That's my experience. I was wondering, why are we just doing it just to do it? How about you find somebody that's really in need yeah. and give them what they need for Christmas? Amen. Instead of just spending because you can. So... That part to me was the difference in Christmas. Both of them are good. I'll take a little bit of both. Amen. And teach my children, our children. Mm -hmm. Well, God bless. I just want to remind you that you are tuned in to the T-O-P-R-C -T TV. 
Amen. That's our new channel, T O P R C T V. Uh, Lady Young, God bless you. Why don't you talk about Christmas? Um, my Christmas is almost the same as everyone else's. Um, if I could think of one good Christmas was when um, the first year we moved out of our apartment on Fisher Avenue in White Plains, and my mom bought a house, well, we got a house in Elmsford, and the first Christmas there was, like, the first time we got to, like, decorate the entire house, like, the outside, the inside. We got personalized bulbs with everybody's name on it. So Christmas to me is more like family gathering. Um, but my favorite Christmas was Christmas 2009. Come on. <laughs> I got 10 gifts for 10 years. And my 10th gift was an engagement ring. Woo! Woo! So <laughs> it was an unexpected surprise because I was always told that I would never get engaged on a holiday or a birthday. That was your thing, right? Mm -hmm. No holidays, no birthdays. If I'm going to get engaged, it's going to be our own day that we can name every single year. So Christmas 2009, you changed all that. Aww. I broke that devil, didn't I? <laughs> so that would be my favorite Christmas. That's really the only gift that I always remember. Oh my God, look at that, look at that. Give an honor to me <laughs> and to the goodness of me. Just playing. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I want you to, and I wanted to keep it brief, but um, I want everybody to be encouraged with Christmas. Um, it's not about what you get. Sometimes it's about what you give. Sometimes it's about how you feel. Um, sometimes it's how you make other people feel. And it's just not the day. It's not, it's not just um, um, getting on that one day. Um, uh, Christmas uh, or the spirit of giving should be something that we carry. Um, well, I'll just tell this story. I remember I was really bad when I was younger, and I didn't do well in school. And I got all D's in one C. <laughs> and I was so glad that the holiday came. And I remember my mother, she was like, yeah, I'm going to get you. And I thought just getting the beating was enough, but um, it was Christmas time. Um, the songwriter said it was Christmas time in Hollis, Queens. Mom's cooking chicken and collard greens. Well, it wasn't my mama, but it was a mama. Okay. <laughs> and um, and I, <laughs> and I did bad in school. My mother was like, I'm going to get you. So she gave me a big box, and I was like, yeah, I know what this is. Mm. I remember opening that box, and the box, I opened that box. There was nothing in it. There was another box. I opened that box, and I got to this little card and said, better luck next time. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> and I was so mad at her. Uh, I really, I promise you, I, I, if I had, if I had, if I had, you know, if I had something to, to if I could get away with running her over with something, I was so set that I was going to get some because I was the drummer for the church, and I didn't get nothing from the church. And um, little did I know that she had something for me. Um, but uh, my mother would always write from Santa. Um, <laughs> to Daryl, from Santa. That. And so one day I said to her, I said, hey, Ma, um, why does Santa write like you? Why is Santa ha handwriting is like yours? And she said, oh, boy, ain't no Santa. So I said, well, what are you telling me about Santa Claus for? And so... Um, um, time went on, and there's one of my favorite Christmases is when my mother brought me a, a really big TV. The thing was huge, but it wasn't flat screens then, y'all. So the box was about seven feet wide, and uh, and uh, and she put on the box. She said, "This is your only gift from Santa." I said, hey, "Why you put from Santa?" She said, "Oh, boy, it's just a habit. You know it's from me." I said, oh, okay, well, thank you, Santa Eloise. And um, we just had good times, um, you know, uh, uh, just sharing and, and giving. And a lot of our times were spent, um, we would go to the prison on, on Christmas. We'd had, we'd had um, we would go to men's prison at 6 o'clock, 
and um, we would spend about three hours doing the whole process. And um, that was every, 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 every Christmas for years. And so um, I thank God for just, you know, uh, the opportunity to uh, just remember some of the things that, um, that made us, right? Right, y'all? It made us who we are. Oh, um, yes, every Christmas did. ain't great, but um, we thank God for this season. Um, thank God for our church. Yes, amen. How's your church doing, Pastor? Amen. Church is doing good. We actually um, had a little Christmas program yesterday. Uh, one of my members, she works with this organization, and so um, it was a blessing. Uh, they had a lot of gifts for the kids, gave and away coats. Were kids were happy. It's um, a blessing. They filmed the kids. The kids made cards, and they made them for their parents and all types of stuff, and they were very excited. They won prizes, and they played games, and so it was good. It was good. And then today I got a phone call for someone for me to pick up coats and all this stuff to distribute them out to the community, so we doing good. That's beautiful. Um, it's, 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 it's a good feeling. Giving, uh, it just brings so much um, cheer to our hearts, and I just want to say um, from all of us, guys, from all of us, uh, Merry Christmas. Um, we thank God for, for you and your families. And it's time to share. Have a good time, even if it's alone. Have a good time. Uh, those who don't have family, uh, the house is always open. Go to somewhere where you don't have to be alone. Um, this is not a time to be sour. Um, I know 2020 was a rough year, but look at God. We're here now. Uh, we're at the end of the year, and you've made it. You know you've made it uh, this far. So we love you from the Tabernacle of Prayer, for the, from the pastors of the Tabernacle of Prayer. Uh, we just like to send you some seasoned cheer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year to you. God bless you guys. God bless you. Love you. Love you. God bless. Okay, I have a question I ask you. Did you enjoy the show tonight? Yes, I did. It was amazing. Well, folks, you know what? We hope you enjoyed it as well. We wish you a Merry Christmas and, and a Happy New Year. Year.